It is now 7.03. The board has reconvened from closed session. Mr. Islam, do you have a report? The board has not taken any actions um, uh, the, uh, after the, and the, at the end of the open session. The board will reconvene uh, closed session again. So no action was taken. Thank you. Tonight we have a full board meeting, but first let's have uh, Sophia Arhenel, Arhenel, eighth grade uh, student from Jehu Middle School, ASB Vice President, to come lead us in the pledge. Good evening. Please put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, Sophia. Next, we have uh, comments from the floor. At this time, any person wishing to speak on any item not on the agenda will be granted three minutes to make a presentation. Uh, Mr. Islam, do we have anybody? Yes. L Laura Dean from Jehu. Good evening, board members, parents, guardians, and fellow staff members. My name is Laura Dean, and I am the proud advisor of Jehu Middle School's ASB. Back in August, I had the distinct pleasure of taking 18 of my ASB students to Valley Mountain in the Big Bear area. Pally Mountain is a camp designed to assist groups like ASB in becoming stronger leaders. I was not alone on my weekend trip. Mr. Rod Campbell from Rialto Middle and Mrs. Shelley Gates from Kolb were also there with their ASB students. We have participated in a scavenger hunt, learned archery, sang karaoke, competed in a ropes course, and did the zip line. In the midst of all this fun, we met many new friends, learned new campfire songs, Happy Llama, Sad Llama, Totally Rad Llama. <laughs> oh, sorry, maybe another time. We swapped ideas for pep rallies, lunchtime activities, and dance themes. All three schools want to sincerely thank you for allowing us to go on a weekend getaway to not only learn more about ASB and what it takes to be a leader, but more about ourselves as well. From the cold Jehu and Rialto Middle ASBs, we thank you and can't wait to go again next year. <laughs> as a separate note, moving on from our thank yous, Jehu would like to offer an invitation to our secret guest judges in the district judging the red ribbon contest to stop by Jehu, to exit your vehicles, and to come and participate in our Red Ribbon Week maze that we will have set up on the front lawn of our campus. So please come and, and partake in the festivities that we have planned. Thank you. No one else? No. no. Okay. Next we have uh, comments on the agenda items. Any person wishing to speak on any item on the agenda will be granted three minutes to make a presentation. None. Okay. Next we have presentations, uh, DSAC student uh, presentations, and usually our student board member, Micah, presents, and maybe Saida, you can assist. <laughs> Thank you, President Ayala. Uh, first, we have Jessica Viabando from Jehu Middle School. Good evening, Honorable Board of Education, Acting Superintendent Mr. Islam, and the viewing audience. My name is Jessica Vilpando, current ASB historian, and in the spirit of October, it is a treat to be here tonight. ASB is currently selling ice cream after school for 
Also, we are currently fundraising candy and chips. Want some? They're a dollar each. I kind of owe myself three dollars, but shh. <laughs> Boo! Ah! E! Did I scare you? October 30th, ASB is having our Halloween dance, so make sure to come in your costumes and dancing shoes to dance the night away. It's only two hours, but it'll be a night to remember. Red Ribbon Week is right around the corner. We are all going to wear red shirts this Friday the 25th to support non-bullying and being drug-free. Our motto is, a healthy meat is drug-free. Be sure to stop by Jehu next Tuesday the 29th and check out our Halloween drug-free surprise. We intend to win first place and take home the Red Ribbon Trophy like last year. Mr. Islam, thank you for the $1,000 first place prize money. You can just write the second check for us now. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to vote Jehu. Whoop whoop. In DSAC, thank you Mr. John Roach for the team building activity at our last DSAC meeting. It's nice to know that we can do more with yarn than just knit. That's all from Jehu. Thank you and have a great evening. Next, we have Jorge Nunez from Cusera Middle School. Good evening, <clears throat> Good evening, Honorary Board of Education, Acting Superintendent Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. My name is Jorge Nunez, and I am the ASB president at Cusera Middle School. October has been an eventful month for Cusera's student body. The 12th, our AVID program took 6th, 7th, and 8th graders to a UCLA football game. Go Bruins! <laughs> the 14th, a meeting was held in order to inform parents about a student trip to Washington, D.C. that will be offered by World Strides in June of 2014. Do you want to go, Mr. Islam? <laughs> the 16th, we had a family math night, which was done to help improve student math skills. This week, we began to decorate the campus for Red Ribbon Week to show that Kusera is drug free. And also, on that note, Kusera wants to take the trophy for Red Ribbon Week. And the 24th, we will have our Red Ribbon Week assembly, which is called Dream Dare Do. Later that day, we, Kusera will host a student dance called the Glow Dance. In order to honor Kusera students with perfect attendance, on the 25th, we will be hosting another dance specifically for them during sixth period. On November 1st, Kusera will be hosting their Breakfast of Champions to honor the students that will be, that followed Kus October's character trait, which is safety. Our football team won one game and will be playing in the semi-championships. And our volleyball team is excited to be playing the championship game this Saturday, October 26th. As of now, the volleyball team is currently undefeated and has been for three years. Our championship cheer squad will also be participating this Saturday. That is all for this month. Thank you for your time and have a good evening. From Frisbee Middle School, Jordan Dixon. Good evening, members of the board, school district, and parents. I am Jordan Dixon, ASB representative for Frisbee Middle School. ASB is off to an amazing start this school year with the return of Falcon Radio and our school-wide fundraiser in full effect. We are sure that our ASB program is going to have a successful year. Our school-wide fundraiser has launched September 10th and was held for exactly one month. We so far have ordered and distributed over 400 cases of chocolate. That's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Students ha that have participated have the chance of earning a trip to Knott's Berry Farm and a trip to Disneyland. We, have definitely, we definitely have a lot of students interested in these fantastic school-wide field trips. We will also participate next week in the nationwide Red Ribbon, Red Ribbon Week. We will work in conjunction with the PE department and decorate our school to make every student aware that FMS is drug-free. We will have Camfell Productions out here next week speaking of the importance of being drug-free and a bully-free school and demonstrating how to live a healthy, drug-free life can help you achieve your dreams and goals. Thank you for your consideration. This is all the information we have for ASB now. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From Kolb Middle School, we have Richard Acosta. Richard, 
Good evening, honorable board members, acting superintendent, Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. I am Richard Acosta, Kolb's ASB vice president, and it is very nice to see you all here tonight. I wanted to give some information as well as to what has been happening at Kolb Middle School. We had our very first dance of the school year just a couple weeks ago, and we had a blast. Over 175 students showed up to show their dance moves. We are all sorry that we didn't get to see any of you there to show us young ones how dancing is really done. <laughs> uh, it's okay, maybe next time. Red Ribbon Week started today and we've been decorating the school and Kolb is happy to announce that we are positively drug free. We are all pledging to be drug free now and in our future. We are hoping to be successful in our bright futures so that we can make a difference in our community. You are all invited to Kolb's Fall Carnival. It is scheduled for October 30th. That's next week. We are having this carnival to celebrate the fact that we are number one in the district for top middle school CST scores. We will be having inflatables for the kids, but we will share them if you want to jump around with us. Kona Ice will be there and the In-N-Out Burger Truck. Mmm, yum. Mm -hmm. Along with the photo booth, plus so much more. Please consider this as your invitation to attend. In fact, everyone is invited to come out and share the festivities. It, uh, it'll be fun. And if you bring can, a canned food item to help our canned food drive, you will see a discount to the fun. That's it for me for now. Well, until next time, have a great night and thanks for your time. And from Rialto Middle School, we have Andrea Succi. Good evening, Honorable Board of Education, Acting Superintendent Mr. Islam, and our viewing audience. My name is Andrea Succi, and I am the ASB 8th grade Vice President. This has been a very busy couple of months for Rialto Middle School. We have received our API scores, and although they were not as high as we expected, there were still many shining lights among them. Our carnival on November 8th will be to celebrate those students who were proficient or grew and to prepare for our road ahead. AVID hosted a family night October 10th with Anthony the Magic where dinner and a show were included for the admission price. They had over 300 family members in attendance. Our ASB attended a middle school leadership conference hosted by Rialto High School where they mentored us on what leadership is and how to make your campus come alive with spirit. It was great working with the other middle schools that day and the high school students were terrific. We hosted a very successful Farmer Boys Night to raise funds for our counselors and their incentive programs in conjunction with Kolb Middle School. We have hosted two energetic dances with over 200 in attendance at each. Our next dance called Chamber of Screams will be on October 30th from 3 to 4.30. You're welcome to come if you dare. This week is Spirit Week, so grab your hats and giddy on up because tomorrow's Western Day. Yeehaw! Just last weekend, our boys flag football team continued their su success with the third complete season undefeated with the win over the Falcons of Frisbee. And on Saturday the 26th, cheerleading, volleyball, and football will be fighting for first place. Thank you for your time and have a great evening. So you can see a lot going on throughout the district and that's good to hear, good to see. Next we have uh, some special uh, recognitions and we'll start with the REA recognition and that will be presented by uh, uh, Clerk of the Board, uh, Mr. Martinez. Good evening to one and all. Um, I'm here tonight to honor Frisbee Middle School math teacher Susan Meeks. Susan, please join me. Do you have family here tonight? Bring them on up. We, we, can, we can embarrass the entire family. <laughs> okay. Soon as, Susan is the Rialto Education Association's Employee of the Quarter. Quite an honor. 
Miss Meeks was born in Los Angeles and graduated from Gardena High School. She earned her teaching credential and her bachelor's degree from Cal State Los Angeles in child development. Before coming to work at the Rialto Unified School District in 1991, Miss Meeks also worked in Los Angeles, Riverside, and San Bernardino City Unified School Districts. In Rialto, I found my home. She smiled. I love working with the kids, and we as teachers learn from them as much as they learn from us. It's a dual relationship of respect and knowledge. Miss Meeks' first job at the RUSD was teaching first grade at Henry Elementary School. She then transferred to Kelly Elementary for five years, teaching first and second grade. She transferred to Curtis Elementary for seven years, and then in 2005 started working as a math, algebra one, and algebra two teacher at Frisbee Middle School for seven and eighth grades. Um, yes, uh, vested interest from the principal. <laughs> Miss Meeks is a mom of two grown children. Her son Samuel is a student at UC Riverside, and daughter Sylvia is a student teacher at Dollahan Elementary. Hey. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Another principal with a big smile over there. Miss Meek says that in her spare time, she enjoys scrapbooking and watching movies. She is also involved with the district's Honor Our Own annual, annual Employee and Retirement Committee and is an active REA board member. Quite busy. I am surprised and humbled that I was selected, she replied. It's such a wonderful recognition. REA President Lisa Lindbergh said that it was an honor to select Miss Meeks. Susan is always ready to lend a hand. She has been a member of our volunteer REA committee for four years, or four years, and a de dedicated site rep, said Ms. Lindbergh. Su Susan is a representative you can count on to let her site know what's happening. She represents her colleagues well. Congratulations, Ms. Meeks. Thank you, President Ayala, Ms. Meeks. Please shake the hand of the board. Next, we have a presentation that goes out to CSEA, and that will be presented by Ms. Gilbert. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Tonight, we have the honor to present our employee of the quarter to Michael Harrison, Officer Michael Harrison. Where is he? Come on up. All right, Mar Michael, a San Bernardino County native, the 41 year old officer grew up in Rialto. The Harrison family, is this your mom and dad? Yes. Please, come on up. <laughs> she, she doesn't want to. Yeah, I understand. Come on, dad. <laughs> you can come. He wants to lean on you for support, so that's what we do. Right. And I want to say that Sharon, Michael's mother, retired as his secretary at Cove was it Cole? Cole yeah. Middle School. So congratulations on your retirement. Very nice. Very nice. How many years did you work there? I worked there eight years. Eight years. So we thank you for your service to Rialto Unified School District. Father Lauren, this is Lauren, moved when the Harrison to Rialto when the Harrison boys were young. He has three younger brothers, Shane. Ryan and Chad. The memories that I acquired, acquired growing up in our home were great. Any sport or childhood game, we all could come for up 
play, we were played in our yard. That's during the time when children played outside <laughs> and didn't watch games on or play video games. We would go swimming at our neighbor's homes that had pools. We played games there. Memories that I gained from my neighborhood would spill over into the community as I got involved with recreational sports. It was a great time with great family support. Officer Harrison attended Morgan. Any cheers for Morgan? Rialto then, Rialto, it used to be Rialto Junior High, now it's Rialto Middle School, and Eisenhower. He's an Eisenhower graduate. <laughs> After graduation, Officer Harrison began working full time with his uncle at his book binary business. Right away, I began having this desire to get into law enforcement, he remembered. I enjoy helping people who are in need and I always and I always have. I realized that I could do this for the rest of my life and be happy. And I decided that is what I wanted to do. Officer Harrison joined the Rialto Police Explorers program. Once in the program, he was quickly promoted to the ranks of lieutenant. Officer Harrison put himself through the San Bernardino Sheriff's Basic Law Enforcement Academy in 1994. While attending the academy, he received a full-time position in August of 1995, working for the Rialto Unified School District as a campus officer. Officer Harrison graduated from the academy with a 4.0 GPA in September of 1995. He remains employed with the district as a campus officer at Cusera Middle School. <laughs> Go Cusera! <laughs> Throughout many years of experience working as a campus officer, it has been rewarding as well as challenging to work with both the middle school and high school age adolescents the rewards far exceeding the challenges, he said. I sincerely enjoy working and developing personal relationships that I have been able to acquire working as a campus officer. Cheryl Decker, is Cheryl here? All right, Cheryl, there you are. Rialto Chapter CSEA president said, from his biography, you can observe that Officer Harrison has had a passion to serve students, staff, and the education community. He is friendly and a caring man with a big heart, and he's always ready to assist with a moment's notice. On behalf of the Ed Board of Education, congratulations to our CSEA Employee of the Quarter, Michael. And I want to take his hand, and this is your certificate. Thank you. Would you like to have a word to say? Oh, well, you make you say that, right? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to take this time to thank the CSEA uh, for the award. Um, Ed for nominating me. I don't know where he went. He was here a little bit ago. Two ago? Oh, okay. Ed, I thank you. Um, I also like to thank the district for giving me an opportunity to do what I enjoy. Um, the students, my colleagues, uh, partners, and supervisors that I've worked alongside over the years have helped me shape the skill set that I have, the integrity, and the professionalism uh, that I have. Uh, last, but most important, I'd like to thank my parents for raising me to be the man that I am today and with the love that you share to everybody that you come across and with the work ethic that helped me obtain this award. Thank you.
Next, for the award going out to RSMA, we have uh, Ms. O'Kelly presenting the award. You're so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I probably don't even need those. Okay. Well, tonight it gives me great pride to uh, present the RSMA, Rialto School Managers Association's Employee of the Quarter Award to the one and only Mrs. Robin MacGyver Brown. Come on down. <laughs> and would her family come up too? Okay, Mrs. Brown is the Senior Director of Categorical Programs and Services for the district. In other words, she's the money lady. <laughs> A Fontana native, Mrs. MacGyver Brown was born to Floyd and Joyce MacGyver. The MacGyver siblings, Rhonda, one of the leaders of the Parent Center, Rhea, principal of Rialto Middle School, and James all graduated from Eisenhower High School. <laughs> I love to see how many people we honor or, or recognize that graduated from high school in Rialto and returned to work in Rialto. I just think that's, that's a wonderful tribute to what a great town we have. After graduating from Ike in 1983, Mrs. MacGyver Brown attended UCLA, graduating with a bachelor's degree in psychology. She also earned her master's degree in administration from Pepperdine University. Mrs. MacGyver Brown began her public education career as a teacher's aide in LA Unified. From there, she went on to work at San Bernardino City Unified as a teacher. It was the career choice she desired. Ever since the first grade, I always wanted to be a teacher, recalled Mrs. MacGyver Brown. <laughs> but I also love what I do now every single day. And you know, I always wanted to be a teacher too. I used to line my dolls up and teach them. <laughs> uh, in February 2000, she accepted the job to be an assistant principal of Henry Elementary School at Rialto Unified School District. In 2004, Mrs. MacGyver Brown was promoted to principal at Kelly Elementary. Impressively, three years later, the school exited program improvement status and the school's academic performance index jumped from 603 to 711 points. That is phenomenal. <laughs> One year later in 2008, Mrs. MacGyver Brown was promoted as the director of categorical programs. In 2010, she was promoted as the senior director of categorical programs. One day, my English professor at UCLA asked me where I received my schooling, recalled Mrs. MacGyver Brown. I told him Rialto Unified, but I then asked him why. He replied, because your paper was so well written. Your district did an excellent job preparing you for university. That was a great compliment to our district. Married to Jimmy Brown, Chief of Police at Cal State San Bernardino, the couple are busy raising two daughters, and one who's attending Cal State Fullerton, <laughs> and another who is in the fifth grade. I'm very much a dance mom, Miss MacGyver Brown laughed. In my spare time, that is all I'm doing, <laughs> going to ballet, tap, jazz, and hip hop classes. You name the place, and I'm driving there. Well, the next time we do Gangnam Style, I'm gonna, yeah, <laughs> we'll battle. <laughs> Daniel Husbands, principal at Dollahan Elementary and the president of RSMA said, Robin has worked tirelessly to make sure Rialto Unified is ready for federal program monitoring. She always provides assistance and direction regarding categorical programs, ensuring that the primary and only focus is on student achievement. Despite the amount of pressure that she may be under, she always has the most pleasant demeanor and continuously places things in a positive light. She is deserving of being named an employee of the quarter. On behalf of the Board of Education, congratulations to Mrs. Robin MacGyver Brown. Okay, gotta hold that. 
It's very quiet again. Um, I just have to say a few words. Normally when I get behind this desk, it's answering a question for the board, so I get a little nervous now. But uh, I just want to to thank everyone, um, all of the managers. Everyone is so deserving. We come to work and we love what we do. And I kind of like that remark, um, Dan, about a nice demeanor because I've been a little grouchy lately. <laughs> I think I've been under federal program monitor pressure because next week is our week. But we have an amazing Ed Services team, and I wouldn't want to be any other place but Rialto. Yes, it was around 2007, the last time I touched this desk, when I was appointed a qu employee of the quarter. And at that time, I was the proud principal of Kelly, and I read the names of every one of my teachers because without them, we would not have been able to do the work that we did at that school. It took a staff that believed nothing was impossible. It took a group of parents and the most awesome students in the world to, to do what we did. And so I, I have the privilege now. I cried for three days when they said I was promoted to the district. <laughs> and people, my sister said, why are you crying like a kindergartner? I said, well, I'm not too worried about the kids. They're pretty resilient. They can take care of the teachers. But I was so concerned about who would take care of my staff, who would love them, who would, who would be their cheerleader. And, um, but I had a wonderful replacement in Linda Minor, and I'm proud to say that Kelly Elementary School still is out of program improvement. And so every time I come up, I will always remember that journey we took. I will always remember those teachers and those students and those wonderful parents. And just like um, the young man from CSEA, I have an awesome family. My husband fooled me because he took my daughter to dance. And I said, well, that's OK. You're not going to make it back. Then lo and behold, I see him. He was in jeans and an old t-shirt. <laughs> and so he made it. Um, and my, my daughter is here. Um, uh, she's in Cal State Fullerton, and I love her because I was the person who gave her her first memorable words. Mommy, pick me up. There's no one else here at school. I said, oh, you are so wrong. There's always someone at school. The custodian <laughs> is there. You are okay. <laughs> and so, and then to my parents who, who travel wherever we come, near and far, um, everything we do is like a family. They lived in this community for 43 years. Um, at one time, my mother wanted to move, but... <laughs> I guess that's, that hope is over. <laughs> they are where they are for 43 years, and, and they have been strong supporters. And my oldest sister, who is running around somewhere, uh, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to work with both of my sister. And Marianne Coco, she may be somewhere running around here, but she has worked with all three MacIver sisters. <laughs> And she's still sane, and she comes to work. So I love her dearly <laughs> because I don't know how many people can put up with all three of us. And finally, to my boss, to the one who keeps me grounded and the one who has taught me how to relax and smile and whistle and just <laughs> let things um, have their way, uh, and, and also be calm and patient. And to our acting superintendent, thank you so much for your support. And I thank all of you. Thank RSMA. Next, we have a presentation of the Rialto Unified School District Common Core. State standards. Uh, the plan is going to be presented by Dr. Susan Levine, an associate superintendent, educational services. Are we sitting here, or do you, are we going? Oh, we, we can I think yeah. if you, you can just scoot over. Maybe you okay, won't have that's to. Fine. If that's okay. Saida, could you lower the lights a little? Yeah. Oh. 
Beautiful. Well, good evening, board and um, audience. Hope everyone is well this evening. And we have been putting a lot of work into our proposed plan for the Common Core State Standards. As you know, this is considered a transition year. And so uh, we are busily working so that next year we will, um, we will successfully launch our new Common Core curriculum. So the governor's budget was very kind to us, and we have received, and the money is in our coffers, $5.3 million to implement the Common Core State Standards, which we call CCSS. And what um, you need to know about the money is it's only for two years. It has to be completely spent by next year. So it's for this year and next year. And um, you'll see in the plan we talk a lot about math and not as much about English language arts, and that is because there will not be any new English language arts materials until 2017, whereas um, the math books will be available to pilot in the spring. So this money does not cover adoption for English language arts, and usually our adoptions go at about a million dollars a pop. So we are hoping that there'll be more, uh, more state dollars uh, along the way. And um, so the monies that came to us can only be used for three specific purposes. Professional development, and that's for anyone who uh, deals with students. Instructional materials that are aligned to the new Common Core Standards. And also the integration of technology-based instruction and technology that will uh, support the new computer-based assessments because the, um, the assessments will be taken on the computer. Um, th they are saying right now we'll have three years where we could still use pencil and paper if we want to. But really, that is still kind of sketchy since we really uh, have only seen some examples of the assessment. We're not really sure. The information has been slow in coming to us. But we want to be ready in Rialto. We want to be at the forefront. So even though we just got the money for the, uh, the transition to the Common Core, you should know, board, that we have been working. Um, actually, last year was my first year, but the year before that, our professional development center began um, doing professional development for teachers. And the department was already in a lot of conversations about the Common Core. And you can see that our plan is going to be in six areas. Um, assessment, curriculum, instructional strategies, materials, professional development, and policies. So I'm not going to read all of this for you, but you can see in each area we have already uh, done several things, and I'll just point out a few of them. In assessments, we've taken the trials, and we've already um, done some performance tasks. In curriculum, we've created awareness. Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been looking at uh, what our scope and sequence can look like. In instructional strategies, the Professional Development Center has been so busy, and our goal is to train every teacher in the district which with a small staff is a big goal, but they're working every day. Um, our focus has been uh, depth of knowledge, close reading, accountable talk. Uh, materials, we have begun, uh, especially at the, um, at the K through uh, second grade, we have purchased some supplemental materials. And also um, with Q funds, some of the schools have, uh, pr have purchased um, iPads as well as uh, laptop carts, and many of the elementary schools have already purchased uh, the, the laptop carts. We've also written a new eighth grade math course that's in place this year in eighth grade Common Core Math. Um, and you'll see that we haven't done anything with policies yet. That will be in the forthcoming plan because the state has been slow in providing all the information. And we don't want to change the board policies until we are you know, sure of what, what needs to be changed. So the, those are the things that we've already worked on. So how was this plan drafted? The first thing the Educational Services Department did was identify the six focus areas, which I have um, 
pointed out to you in the, in the previous plan. And then we picked, we, we really put our heads together to write these overarching goals in each area. So this is the one goal that we want to accomplish. So in materials, we will identify and provide materials that align to the Common Core State Standards to empower teachers and students with the tools they need to bring a strong academic foundation. Because all of this is about teachers and students and support staff. So what steps will we take to bring them the appropriate materials? For instruction, we'll ensure that teachers utilize rigorous research-based instruction based on the design principles within the Common Core State Standards. So we need to make sure that all our teachers are trained. In curriculum, we will develop a viable curriculum for all students that is aligned to the Common Core. And the curriculum would be our scope and sequence, what they're going to learn, what the units will look like. For assessments, we'll identify, develop, and administer rigorous and relevant formal and informal Common Core State Standards-based assessments through a variety of methods. So um, even though there will still be some multiple choice, there are other kinds of assessments in the Common Core. There will be some multiple choice, but there will also be what are called constructed responses. They'll be performance tasks. So we have to make sure that the students are practicing the kinds of assessments that they'll have on the new Smarter Balanced exams. Professional development will provide ongoing professional development to all staff in the transition towards full implementation in conjunction with our instructional priorities. And you'll notice that we did not mention technology as an area because instructional technology and the hardware is integrated within the six areas because technology plays a key role in each of these six areas. Um, so you'll notice that in your packet board you have a, a spreadsheet and um, the IT department, along with Ed Services, worked very hard in a needs assessment to figure out what we need for the SBAC testing. And along with the, the directors, they went out and they went to every school and they conducted a needs assessment. And um, the proposal is to create at least one computer lab at each site also with um, upgrades for the sites that already have labs. And you could see um, that the estimated cost to upgrade the, and create the labs is two point, approximately $2.5 million. And um, especially at the elementary level, we do not have the hardware for the, for the exams. I believe it was 183 computers are SBAC ready. Um, we really have um, not had a, a plan where we replace computers on a regular basis. And so now, you know, we really have to get serious and, and put these in place. And, and you, can, um, you can read this at, at your leisure. You'll be able to see some will require um, drops that have to be made because there are no labs. Um, and eventually, you know, we have a plan for all the schools to be wireless, but that's through our E-rate and not through the Common Core monies. And so the, um, the, this is the proposal at this time for $2.5 million. Okay, so the first draft of the plan um, was developed by the directors and coordinators. Um, and you'll see in the plan board, which you have a copy of, it's about 20, 23 pages. You'll see each of the focus areas, and you'll see that we include the person responsible, a timeline, the evidence, because every goal needs to be measurable. What is the evidence that we have completed these objectives? And also estimated funding needs. Um, the thing about the funding, you'll notice, well, I'll tell you, um, if you add it all up in the plan, it's $6.4 million, not $5.3 million, because not all of our needs can be funded through 
through the Common Core Plan because we just need too much. And so we'll have to supplement either uh, supplemental things where, where it's possible through categoricals and also through some of our regular textbook money. Um, we will have to supplement the plan at about uh, $1 million. In, in this first draft, we spent approximately 20, uh, 20 hours working on it. Okay, so then once we had a draft of the plan, we went to get input, and this was big. First, we brought the plan to the District Advisory Committee, Parent Advisory Committee on October 4th, and all the parents in attendance were able to make comments and uh, ask questions. Then on October 11th, that was challenging because we had to have everything translated into Spanish, but it was very neat because our DLAC parents had a lot of very good questions and comments to guide the Ed Services Department. At that point, every classified and certificated employee res received the draft copy of the plan. And they were um, invited to the gallery walk on October 15th that was held at Rialto Middle School where any teacher or classified staff was able to come and, and do a gallery walk with the, the plan posted on the walls and um, make comments. And we got a lot of feedback from the gallery walk. But in addition, I also, for people who weren't able to attend, I received many emails um, with suggestions. And then uh, the directors have been going out to individual sites, talking about the plan and, and answering questions. So we feel very confident that everyone has had a chance to put their input in. And bless my secretary, Michelle, she typed up every single question and comment from all of these groups for, for the directors. And so we really took the input phase seriously. So then we revised the plan. And board, you'll see on your copy that um, in blue, those are the revisions um, based on what the input was from, from our staff, from our parents. Uh, they really gave us some good input. And there were a lot of questions. And because there's so many questions, we're uh, in the process of having an FAQ, frequently asked questions about the Common Core and the Common Core plan at the uh, Ed Services new webpage as part of the new website. So it should be in place um, with the help of John Roach within the next week or so. And we'll provide the board with a hard copy of the FAQs. And so what's next? Um, the way the law was written, the board, uh, the plan is to be presented in an open board session as we are doing this evening and giving that to the board to look at. And of course, um, as you read it, if you have questions, feel free to contact Mr. Islam and he'll direct the, how you would get the answer from him, from me, from one of my staff. And then um, based on your input if there are other revisions that need to be made we will make them and the completed plan will be brought back to the board for your approval on november 13. what questions can i answer um, With the 2.5 million, uh, referring to the the lab upgrades and things like that, is that also including the laptop carts that are going to have to be purchased for most? Schools? No, that does not include the laptop carts. This is only to configure a lab, a stationary lab. Okay. So the schools can buy laptop carts out of their out of their funding that they have. Uh, many buy one a year. I was just talking to Kathy Knowles from Myers. I believe she has four, four carts. And so some, you know, some schools have been making technology more of a priority than others, but they do have categorical money that can be used to buy laptop carts. Well, the high schools might have a little bit more of a problem because simply the number of students and the number right. of um, laptop carts they would need. Um, that would be a lot of funding, so perhaps we need to, to look at that again. Well, we would, we would be happy with extra funds to, you know, to give the school sites some more. This is our initial proposal. Yes, we definitely, if we can find the funding, we would like to put more in 
if, if possible. And some schools are in better shape than others. For example, uh, Eisenhower and Rialto High School, who had Q funds, have infinitely more technology than Carter High School has. Carter High School's technology has never been upgraded since the school was built. And so, you know, that's a stumbling block and we have to look a little more, more closely at that. But they will, you know, get an upgrade in their labs so the students can take the test. But no, it, w it won't be enough. Right. And, and we have to keep that in mind. That's a real concern. Um, uh, next question. With the um, math in particular, I've, I've been hearing from some teachers, they're a little distressed that we don't seem to have decided yet as a district, uh, or has, are you meeting with groups of math teachers to get their input on whether we're going to stay traditional or go with integrated math? Because especially if we're trans transitioning to integrated math, that there's a lot of things that go along with that. Absolutely. Yes, um, Andy Luna is going to be presenting to the principals at our professional learning network and from there they're going to invite the math teachers in for a conversation to look at, at pros and cons. Um, this morning at our department meeting uh, Ed D'Souza had a chart and it looks like many of the districts have chosen transitional um, in, our, in our area. Um, Fontana, Chafee. You mean traditional? Tradi no, no, I'm sorry, integrated. I'm still thinking about transitional plan. Thank you. Um, they've chosen integrated. And oh, so- I heard just the, the opposite. Yeah, the, the majority of the districts in our area have chosen that. But um, I'm gonna take another survey Friday at the assistant soups meeting um, with the county because um, I just wanna double check. So yes, the teachers are definitely going to be involved in that. And you know, we're not, you, the textbooks have not even been, won't even be approved till after January. And so for us to even be able to look. So we do have some time because there's no materials approved at this time. Right. But the um, teachers will be included for sure. They have a lot of very valid concerns about credentials, number one, because uh, we have several uh, math teachers at the high school level teaching on supplemental credentials, which only authorizes them to teach through the ninth grade and through the Algebra one level. Thus, if you go to integrated, which would be Algebra one and geometry, are they going to be qualified to teach those classes? So. Those are some of the logistics that we really have to look at. Absolutely. More, more than likely, they would be qualified to teach the first level, but do they have the conceptual understanding mm -hmm. to teach all of it successfully? We're not sure. Right. So you're right. We do have to look at all of that. And the other thing would be, I, I mean, a, a, a suggestion would be if you try, if you do the integrated and you just try to do it cold turkey, like, okay, school year 14, 15, we're doing integrated math, we're pretty much going to have a mess. No, it has to be grandfathered in because of the, in, yeah. yeah, exactly, because of the, the pathway that the students are already following. Okay. Right. Well, I know we've got a lot of teachers hungry for some dialogue. So. Yes, they, they will definitely have the opportunity. And some of the dialogue has already occurred at the curriculum council meetings, but um, we're, we're going to be in good shape, I promise you that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, board? Please. Thank you, Dr. Levine. Um, I, this is really a good plan monetarily, a good round, groundbreaking foundational plan uh, for the labs. But I do want to encourage um, Mr. Islam, yourself, and the board to support um, having all the technology purchased out of IT rather than give it a choice on site? Um, no, it will all be purchased out of IT. Well, moving forward, it, it really is a policy change because up till now, uh, Carter has not been updated, as you mentioned. Right. Um, with this policy change, it would be updated every four years at the maximum length of time and the money would come out of IT's funding, which means it has to be built in. Mm -hmm. So um, that being the case, it's, it's a great start, but uh, there, we can improve always. So 
Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. The, it is the beginning to make sure that all the schools have a lab in place because some elementary schools have no labs. But you'll notice in the plan that something we've been talking about in Ed Services, and of course, I've only been here a short while, but evidently there used to be tech technicians that worked in the labs. And when those positions mm -hmm. were eliminated, many of the schools dismantled their labs because they didn't have anybody to to keep to keep it up i mean they they just don't t get taken care of on their own so with the addition of these labs you know we seriously need to have a conversation when i say we i mean the district about whether we need those positions to maintain those labs mm -hmm. because um you know this is expensive equipment and right. we don't want to see it abused and N not on purpose, but you know, classroom teachers don't always have all the knowledge to troubleshoot in a laboratory setting and, mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's you'll see it, it in the plan as mentioned as kind of investigatory. But we're thinking about that. Thank you. Any other questions, board? Okay, thank you. Well, we thank you, Dr. Levine, and your uh, your staff for doing a great job for us. Before we move on, uh, we would like to give a member of our community an opportunity to speak, and that's uh, Mr. Leroy Martinez. Hi, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Uh, I came here to uh, voice some concerns regarding the recent developments uh, uh, on the Judy Oaks case. And uh, uh, basically, my biggest concern here is not the money, it's not the superintendent, it's not all any of these. It's basically one group that I'm here for, the kids. Uh, I, I think when we, these things resurrect, we forget that the whole reason everybody's here is because of the kids. Everybody's making money because of the kids. And everybody's here for the kids. And it doesn't really matter what color they are, uh, it, because they are our kids. And one of the concerns that I had as a community activist was the impact that this $13 million, uh, I'm sorry, $3 million over a 14 year <coughs> period had on the nutritional program of the kids. The, the money that wasn't being used for them had to be used, had to take away something from them. And so people are not focusing on, on the impact on the children, they're focusing on the impact of the money and who took it. Uh, and I think to, to add to this is that the superintendent, I was hoping, was going to step up to the plate and work and find out how that problem could be remedied. But it wasn't. Uh, instead, uh, he spent his time uh, fighting allegations of a romantic affair with uh, uh, Ms. Oaks and charging board members with having a racist campaign, which doesn't help the issue. It doesn't help the kids. In, in fact, it, it, it detracts from the issue because he's, he's defending himself on one end uh, regarding a relationship and he's attacking board members on the other end uh, for, and, and uh, what makes it worse is that, and one of the other reasons that I'm here is that he uh, alluded to the fact that it was a, a racist agenda and uh, included uh, uh, not only uh, our Edgar Montes, but O'Reilly who doesn't look Hispanic to me, but uh, uh, that, uh, as being part of this uh, Mexican-American conspiracy. So uh, I'm here to say that, that this superintendent had, pro had issues in Linwood Unified. I'm not going to get into it, but he was dismissed. He had issues in Compton Unified, and he was asked to resign. So, and, and then he was picked up by Rialto. What happened there? Why? What, what, uh, and I think the other problem <laughs> Is, is, is the fact that uh, the money that, the, he's getting more money than the state superintendent 
of public schools in, in San Bernardino is getting something like 380000 And what bothers me is that he's retired. <laughs> and I think that talks to another issue of superintendents, that why are we paying so much money for superintendents that are retired? Uh, and I think, uh, I think in the final analysis, what we need to do is focus, and we see the kids that were right here, on them. And we focus on what, they, what, what, what was done to them by these folks and what can be done to alleviate it. But if we get into this thing about uh, accusing people of, of having agendas, racist agendas, and splitting us, putting, pitting, pitting us against each other, we're not gonna get anything done. This is for the kids, we're here for the kids. We're not here for African Americans, we're not here for Mexican Americans, we're not here for anybody other than kids. And all that, that's, last time I looked, the kids here were all colors. So I guess I'm, I'm here to say that I was very concerned that this issue, one, that the issue of the kids losing their nutritional program, and the other issue was that it was starting to become a racist agenda uh, that has no place in Rialto Unified. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> the next item is D, public hearing, and uh, we have none. Next, we have the consent calendar items. All items on the consent calendar will be acted upon in one motion, unless pulled by Board of Education members or acting superintendent for individual action. Can I get a motion to approve E through J? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Do we have a discussion? Oh, are there any? No polls? discussion? I just no had polls? a question on um, H3. Uh, okay. And I, my question is just, I'm kind of curious as to these three separate uh, contracts for Stanley Convergent Security so, uh, Solutions. Um, they're all for the same dates, date span, and they're all for the same amount. Can, can someone explain that to me? Uh, Bill, could you come forward and clarify this, please? Good evening, Board. Um, these uh, particular contracts are for software. They're also for uh, equipment, and they're for service for our Stanley uh, Sonatrol security alarm system throughout the district. We had an upgrade on all of our equipment recently. These contracts were all entered into. The problem was is when they were first entered into back on uh, August 22nd, there was, a, there was a mistake, an error in the amount of money that they were, uh, that was being charged, that was being charged to us. So I was able to catch this and actually reduce the amount of money per contract over the five year period. So it saved us about 28,000 over the five year period per each contract. Nice. So. How come there's three for the exact same amount? That just seems a little odd. Yeah, the, it's a franchise deal. So Sonatrol is a franchise. Okay. And they have specific contracts for their software, which is proprietary. And then they have also their, um, it, it's their software, and then their equipment is proprietary also. So you have to have a contract for each one. Okay. But I'm, not, I'm not trying to put you on the spot here, but I've just noticed since I've been on the board, we seem to ratify a lot or I mean, in this case, apparently it's working in our favor, but it seems like uh, when we enter into these contracts, shouldn't the people we're dealing with know what their costs are going to be and we stick to that price because 
Yeah, Many it, times it's been ratify this, and it's usually adding more money. Yeah, this is actually an amendment to the original contract, which we caught the error and reduced the amount of money they were trying to charge us. Okay. Oh, it's always a good thing when you guys reduce the amount right. of the yes. contract as opposed to increase it. So thank right. you. Right. Uh, Those Mr. are the Ralph. only ones you're allowed to bring us. There anymore. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just, I just had one, one sure. more. Just, just for clarification, uh -huh. Fund Twenty One is. That's Measure Y. Okay. That's the bond fund. Mm -hmm. That's right. a bond fund. Why is the bond being used to pay for Sonatrol? That was that was in the original bond resolution to pay for the upgrade. For security for, for, security. for security, yes. For security. Okay. surveillance systems. Yeah, and, 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 and I think it's important, you know, um, if it curves the copper theft and you know and any vandalism and Yeah, and that was in the original bond yeah. resolution. I, we gotta protect the schools. Okay. Okay. Very good? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Any other discussions? Any pulls? Okay. We have a first and a second. Can we get a vote from board members? Aye. 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 Motion carries, E through J. Next, we have uh, discussion action items. Action items will be enacted in one motion unless members of the Board of Education re request specific items to be discussed. We're voting to approve K1 through K. Five, do we have a motion to accept? So moved. Okay, do we have a second? Second. And I have a pull on number four, K4. Okay, pull. Any other pulls? Okay, discussion? Well, this might be a question for Bill again. <laughs> uh, I'd like to know why we have a disputed claim in the amount of $1,460,000 this goes along with what I just said, so. Um. Okay, this, this is concerning the California Multiple Award Schedule contract that we entered into with Field Turf for the, for the fields we just looked at today. Right. Uh, we, had a, we had a lease leaseback project that was with Neff Construction, who was the general contractor basically over the whole project. Mm -hmm. They provided bonds, performance bonds, for field turf. Well, when we got down to the fact of the, the California uh, multiple award schedule contract being paid, the uh, county schools said that they, they exceeded the amount of money uh, on the portion of the, the installation was exceeded 10% of the total cost. And so what, the, what happened was is we, the, the bonds that, that Neff covered for them wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't fly basically because we exceeded the 10% um, total labor in that, in that contract. Now, but isn't that the fault of the contractor? Well, it, 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 it's, it's part of the, the, the CMAS system says that you, can, you can't exceed 10% incidental labor. And so that was, the, that was the issue. So there was an issue because that was the, uh, probably the first lease lease back contract we did. We assumed that, which was which not a good thing to assume, but we assumed that the NEFS, NEFS constructions bonds covered them, which they didn't. And so when we went to, uh, we went to county to pay this, uh, county um, um, schools, the school payables over there said that they had to have their own bond. Well, they can't now, it's done, the job is done. And so we got a, we got a um, opinion from Carol Green at County Council, and she said that you have to go this route by bringing in a resolution to you to file for a disputed claim because they can't go back and get a bond for a project they've already finished. So basically that's why we're bringing this to you. So this is, but we're authorizing to pay these people one and a half million dollars. That's, that's what it says. For the project that they did, that they've already completed. So it has to do, when you buy on CMASH, you're buying on a, on a contract that's, that's. So, well, what can we do? I mean, this is a very expensive lesson to learn. To me, a yeah. million and a half dollars. Yeah. My God. Well, what what, I, what I think, steps can we take to I think to that we learned this? a big lesson in this lease lease back. No more lease lease backs. Well, we, we learned an issue. We learned a problem because we bought we bought what we thought we were buying was just material, but yet there was incidental labor, and the incidental labor exceeded ten percent of the total contract, 
and that's what messed us up here. Now, so, the incidental labor is that uh, leveling the fields that needed to be leveled. Yeah, that's basically leveled? the installation. Okay. So basically, it wouldn't have been able to have exceeded, you know, 140,000 or 10 percent of the 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. So that's that was that was kind of a, a very unique situation because instead of because we got an ex exceptional cost price on that by buying at CMAS. It was like we got an exceptional price. The problem was is they exceeded, the labor exceeded that, and we thought that the general contractor's bonds would cover them, but the county would, would not allow that payment. So we can't pay them, and then it'll just go to a disputed claim unless, unless we go this route. That was an opinion by county council. Uh, boy, I'd like to be clear, Bill. This 1.4 is not the cost of the bond. It is a it's co not the cost okay, of the make bond. Make it clear because I think there's a confusion. No, no. Uh, please make it clear. No, this is the cost of the project. Project. The project cost. So when you have a 1.4 million dollar project cost on CMAS, if you're buying these products through CMAS, they, there's no incidental. The labor cannot exceed 10 percent. Okay, but isn't the general contractor the person who has to make sure the labor does not exceed 10 percent? Well, that, that's, that's the issue I, I, here. This is, See, remember the concrete we had a few right. months ago? <laughs> I mean, we are paying for these well, contractors who, yes. who just say we need more money, yeah. basically. Yeah. Well, this was not, this, this was an issue that was a, I don't know how to say it, but we, we purchased through CMAS so that we got an exceptional price on the, on the material. The problem was is we exceeded the 10 percent in, in an incidental labor. It's so our our, our it construction management exceeded. So do I? The price, is that correct? It's incidental uh, labor because uh, as you see in the field today, uh, it, uh, certain things that we, they didn't expect to, uh, you know, it was not planned that it was going to exceed 10 percent. So through the project, uh, they, they are, they need more work to be done to level the field and put the materials, uh, the artificial turf on the ground. So that exceeds the 10 percent. So it is not that. I understand that that happened, but somebody has to be in charge and somebody has to be watching that and somebody has to make sure it doesn't happen. And that's, I mean, this is what I just said. We are constantly going back to contracts and approving more money for whatever the reason is. And, and we don't have that kind of money to just give away. I mean, somebody's got to be in charge. Somebody's got to be watching. I, 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 just, I just, if I may, uh, with all due respect. Um, <clears throat> There's a question here. Can I? Um, um, uh, I, I just wanted to say one, one thing real quick, uh, Board of President, please, if I may. Please, please. Um, I just would like uh, uh, to uh, uh, share with uh, the board uh, and and with the community. We we have um, some questions, some issues that need to be looked at um, from previous um, uh, work that uh, was already uh, approved. Um, the, this is the fruitation, the 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 fields that are already um, uh, built. Is the fruitation of what was approved, uh, you know, months back, possibly you know, a uh, year or two back. Um, so we do have. I, I would like to remind the board and, and the community that we do have uh, an audit um, uh, for uh, contracts, consultant services, um, and looking at the policies and procedures for those uh, contracts and services. So I, I would just like to uh, ask the board that we be patient and wait for us to get the audit results back. That way, um, you know, we can uh, collectively look at um, whether we need to uh, revamp our policies, our procedures, and, and maybe whether we need to uh, relook at who we're doing business with and who's providing the services for our district, particularly, um, uh, uh, you know, our Measure Y funds, because, um, you know, as, as we were on the tour today, we said, well, thank, thank God that, thank God that these are beautiful fields, but 
Well, and then I think Nancy said, well, we need to thank the voters because the voters are the ones that passed the measure. Why? Mm -hmm. um, so we owe it to the to to uh, all the people um, in our community and, and the taxpayers to make sure that we're doing our due diligence uh, 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 for these funds and how we're, we're using these funds. So I I can understand Mrs. O'Kelly's frustration. Um, I I agree. And um, and uh, uh, sorry, uh, Bill. F you know we don't mean to put you on the spot with your questions, but. Um, I think not just with this case, but previous cases is sure. part of the reason what led up to us wanting to audit and take a look at all of our services. Yeah. Um, so I, I would just like to say that I think if let's wait for the audit to be completed, let's take a look at everything and then, um, you know, we'll move from there. But for clarification, does this mean we need to, because somebody possibly somebody that was providing a service for us didn't do it correctly we we're going to have to fork this bill here well uh, the, we're doing two things first of all the job is done we cannot pay the bill because of the bond issue county school cannot uh, release the payment so is this item for us not to pay this no, no th these items it. correcting the bond issue because of, um, uh, they're not accepting the bond by the NAF constrictions company who assuming the bond of the project so only way we can correct that um, by adopting a re this resolution approval by the governing board tonight so we can release the payment uh, to the uh, contractors who did the project. But one thing I'd like to uh, ask the board, I like to go back and investigate and bring a report to you with your approval tonight why we exceed 10%. I need to know myself why that and we need to hold them accountable. That that would be and I, I, I'm telling you, and I, I want to hold them accountable. As you, you are absolutely correct, this is our taxpayers' money, and they are, If this is their mistake, they have to pay the price. Well, I definitely think it needs to be. Look, I, this is getting out of hand. The number of times right. we go back and pay contractors more money. No. Mr. So, Ralph, this is actually not any more money. It's just we have to pay them. In, or, in order to pay them, we have to do the resolution. I know, that, but not, like I said, somebody, somebody's got to be in charge. Well, somebody should have been watching and making sure that I, labor didn't. I think there was a, there was possibly a, an issue with the legal, you know, the legal portion of the lease lease back mm -hmm. wasn't quite clear at the time whether we could do this with CMAS, even though we were getting a super deal. We, we, we still, it was a technicality. It, it's a technicality is what it. it is. I get it. But the only way we can pay them now is to do this, according to uh, county council. There's an old saying, Bill, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So but, it might have been a good deal, but it's yeah. not a good deal now. Well, <laughs> it, there, it's really not that much extra cost. It's the difference between, you know, 104, you know, th that was the problem. It, it, it's, it's, it's the bonding issue is the problem. One more question. Uh, Mr. Ralph, uh, did the contractor have to um, go in and correct anything from the previous contractor? No, it wasn't that. They, okay. they ran into some ad additional things that had to be done, though, that they found, especially at Carter High. There was some additional idea of uh, things that they ran into, electrical lines and things that they had to regrade. Okay. And so, I mean, it wasn't. It was a normal change order. It wasn't really a change order, but it was a thing that it cost. A little bit more to finish up, but we did exceed the 10 percent of you know uh, incidental labor. And so, so. We, we got a great deal. Help me understand on the whole package, including labor, mm -hmm. or was it only on the turf? And labor is no on it, a sliding. The, this is the whole. That's the whole, the whole package. Project. It just exceeded the 10 percent of the total cost project cost, and yeah. so we can't pay them because because of the bonding issue. That's purely what this is. It's a technicality is what it is. What Ma was Ma the original oh, price? So maybe we could release that and then work on the, the balance? The county county schools won't, won't, they, won't they won't release okay. it. They won't release so the payment. Let me be clear to the board. The amount you re reading on the uh, resolution 1.460424 it, it uh, the lever built into the number that number this is a total cost including the lever yeah. so when you breaking this number lever costs exceed 10 percent when you itemize that number so it's not that we're paying additional 210 percent no.
So the, it, we get a good price, That's including the liver, liver and material 1.460. Now, when, when county school reviewed the breakdown, they say you exceed 10% of your liver. By how much? Is a um, little over 100,000, correct? 20%, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Is the technicality of the, the how you breaking the number labor and material, but did you get a better deal by combined total? Yes, we did. One point four Absolutely. is we're not paying any additional cost no to the project. No. Right. It is it is the, the breaking the the itemized breakdown of the project. It is a technical but issue. It, by ten percent, you should the labor should be below ten percent. Or if if the labor had been under ten percent, we wouldn't have to dish out one point four million dollars. Ten percent no. or less. No, no, that's not up to ten percent. That's not. No. Go ahead. No, that's not what they're saying. Uh, I'm sorry. May I interject no. here? Can you please? May I interject here that uh, the way I see it that uh, can you please state your name and uh, your title? I'm Iris Chu, the f director of facilities planning. I, I was involved in this project in the middle of construction. After reviewing the original contract proposal from Field Turf, I find that original uh, number doesn't show clearly how much of uh, 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 the total amount uh, 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 is uh, belong to the labor part and uh, how much of it is uh, the material part. So it's a combined total. So. When they submit uh, the invoices, it shows the labor separate, the labor uh, and material. The labor means installation. And um, if, um, so that's when uh, the county uh, discovered that the labor exceeds 10 percent of the, the material and that uh, break the CMS rule um, according to their, um, their assess, uh, statement. Uh, right now, uh, if if we start with uh, uh, to uh, to abide by the CMS rule, we may have to separate the purchase of the material and bid out the labor part, the installation of the the turf, and they may it may come back uh, with a little higher. We don't know. We don't know. So right now, uh, I think we got originally we got a good deal is because it's one contractor who supply the material, who install the material, they have the technology. Therefore, I think we got very good deal. So it's uh, really at this point, uh, we cannot pay them because this technicality issue and we uh, ask the board to consider, uh, give authority to let us pay them. Question? Yes, um, so if I understand correctly, the total package price has not changed, just the percentage breakdown has shifted, right. and that has caused the problem. Right. Uh, it's probably never been shif shifted. It's just not been disclosed in the beginning. Correct. So and that should have happened from the beginning. If in the beginning we noticed that uh, there's uh, the breakdown uh, between labor and the material, then uh, we, m we may go, we, we will have to go out to bid the installation part of it separate, separate. separate. And then we wouldn't get the discount yes uh, and the reason is caught by when we submit the bill to pay it broken down lever and material separate so when you multiply when you look at the dollar figure of the project and you say Oops, it's exceed 10 percent that's that's the technicality of the not the county will not pay the bill mm -hmm. Because uh, that's uh, so when we got the prize, we, they gave us a combined total. Right. It was never. It wasn't separated. No, it wasn't. Separated. Uh, just, just one more question. Um, so if you could get us that report, uh, uh, giving us more information on how this happened. Yes. Um, would it be a problem for us to bring this back to the, by the next board meeting, and for us to consider it then after we get our report from Mr. Islam? I would like to say something. Um, you know. There are people out there that need to get paid again. And they have their families. Uh, I know, I know, I know. And they have their families. I was out there today. I was out there today and I seen beautiful work, excellent work. Uh, work that you're gonna be very, very proud of, not only on those fields, but there's more to come, which you'll hear in our comments in a few minutes. So, um, I would like to call for the question here. We have a first and a second. We've had discussion, and 
you, it's it's right here in front of everybody, and we'll vote. Um, I, the, we have a first and a second for the other items, all items except number four. Okay, we'll vote on number it's four good. separately, unless there's any other comments. Well, could I just, if we if we can, could I just make a motion for item four? Uh, could I make a motion for item four that we bring this back by the next board meeting for consideration? Uh, and by that time, Mr. Islam has promised us a report yeah. so we could go over this thoroughly and we can pay it then or decide not to pay it then. But with more information with a re from a report that you, you promised in the board, I think we'd be better informed and, and we can make a better decision then. Would approving this by the next board meeting be a problem? Time-wise, um, they have completed the job 100%, uh, and um, we are going to take the notice completion to the board in December, well, okay, so or the actually well, in November. Board, my recommendation: let's pull it. Let me give you the report, so you are crystal clear why, how it happened, and a uh, couple of weeks. We waited that long, couple of weeks, not going to cause any problem. We we will communicate with the vendor. It's part of the problem they created for us. That's the way I'm going to go and, back to that. And that's what Nancy's upset about. Yeah. Because they, they should give us, in the beginning with the breakdown of the project. And we take the responsibility also, we didn't cause that mistakes. You know, as Bill well, stated. that's my next question. How do we review these contracts, and do we get legal advice on these contracts? I mean, when we're talking this kind of money, we've got to be certain that it's just exactly what we agreed to, well, not nothing ambiguous in it at all. We do, we do but uh, being a CMS contract, it's, it's, it's a state contract, we, it's already gone through the process, so... We did not bid this project as a real 24 school district project. So because the state already went through the bidding because many districts are using this uh, artificial turf for the fill. So basically the state approved the contract. Yes. It, it, that's well, then the state that. can pay the 1.4 million. Well, <laughs> just, okay. I, I, I would just like to. I understand to, correctly, I, I the, okay. the do dollar amount will not change, will not change whether we pay it today comments. or two weeks from now. Is that, You're is that correct. correct. The dollar amount will not change, but uh, again, it's a technical issue. Uh, paying the bill, it exceeds 10% the labor. So my um, recommendation to the board, uh, let's uh, be clear so before you act on it, so we will bring back at the next board meeting. It wouldn't, it wouldn't bother anyone for us to bring the it back. The one need, we uh, have to vote on that. One consequence yeah. of this is that the vendor has to wait you know, okay. another couple of weeks. And we, there's a motion on the floor. We, 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 we still have a, uh, we pulled four. Mm. Can we vote on one, two, one through three. one, two, three, five, and we'll come back to four. So we have a motion uh, by Ms. Gilbert and yourself, a second. Uh, any other discussions? One, two, three, five, because we pull four. Any other discussion? So we can vote on those four items. No discussion? Call for the question. Aye. 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 So motions K1, K2, 3, 5, those resolutions pass. Now let's move back to four. And you Need had a motion, motion to? To uh, pull the an item and, and bring it back for the next uh, board meeting. Do we have a second? Second. OK. Do we have discussion? Anybody else? I know I'd like to make some comments before we vote. Is this, uh, Ms. Chu, is this uh, time sensitive? I know the work has been completed. Yes. Is there families out there going to be suffering because they don't get paid? They have not been paid a dime yet. A dime. Okay. And it's, I just saw the work today. Beautiful work. So we have a uh, first and a second to pull this item. Uh, vote by board members. This, the vote would be to pull the item. Aye. 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 No. No. So we have three, two. The item has been pulled until we have further uh, reports, and perhaps by next board meeting we can reach accord. Thank you. Okay. Comments from uh, 
Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Hyland. Uh, we got, uh, just a reminder, we have an event this Friday, um, uh, October 25th. Uh, uh, we have high school football games. Rialto High School will be playing with the Carter High School, please, uh, and, uh, and also Eisenhower High School with uh, Ukaipa. Please be there and support our students. It's a great event. The event will start at 7 p.m. We'd like to see you all over at um, both events. And I hope a member of the board also can be there on Friday at 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Islam. And next we have uh, comments from uh, board members. And uh, perhaps we can start with uh, Nancy. Well, I did want to uh, thank everybody for coming. And uh, I know the days get long when you sit here all night. But <laughs> um, wanted to say that we, or several of us, did go on the tour today of the Rialto High and Carter High School new track and field. Uh, it's, uh, they're absolutely gorgeous. And so, you know, my, my complaint here, of course, is nothing personal, but I just have to stand up for what's right here. But um, if you have not seen the new track and field uh, arrangements at Carter High School and Rialto High School, please go to a game. I tell you, I, I could feel it. I was a high school principal and standing there. I just know what that does for the pride of the students attending those schools. I know that the more pride they have in their school and the better their school appearance is, the better they perform academically. So it's just a win-win for everybody. And I can't wait till Eisenhower gets done. <laughs> but that's coming soon, hopefully. Uh, we also went to see the Culinary Arts Academy and the Engineering Academy, which are housed at what used to be the old Rialto Middle School, which I literally almost took my breath away. The Culinary Academy is, is complete. We have equipment in there that they have in five-star restaurants. It's absolutely beautiful, and I just cannot wait till it's full of students cooking delicious food for us, and I will be the first in line. The Engineering Academy, they're still pulling everything together, but the equipment they have and the possibilities, I mean, it just makes your, your the mind go wild with the possibilities that we have with those two academies and the great things we can do for our students. So it was a really exciting trip, and I'm very, very proud uh, that we have these facilities in our district. I also attended Eisenhower's homecoming game. Had a great time. They lost, but only by one point. However, at the halftime, after they named the king and queen and, and all the homecoming stuff, I thought it was very cool. They had, um, had the kids vote online for the 20 most inspirational teachers, and they honored those 20 teachers at the game out on the field, and I thought that was just wonderful. And these teachers, you know, all of them were coming up to me. Some of them had tears in their eyes that they had been selected by their students for that, and I just thought that was wonderful. And I also attended the Parents' Summit, and that was another great day. There was a large variety of, of STEM workshops, which I was happy to see because they provided a lot of very valuable information to our parents. And now with the new Engineering Academy, it all goes together, science, technology, engineering, and math, and hopefully we will uh, achieve great things. So thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Ms. O'Kelly. Next, we have uh, Ms. Gilbert. Thank you, President Ayala. I, good evening, everyone. I, too, took the tour, and I echo the sentiments of Mrs. O'Kelly. We have a beautiful structure there at the old Rialto Middle School that will accommodate our high-achieving students in the future. I'm just looking forward to it getting staffed and getting our students enrolled in those programs. And I want to thank the staff because they took their time. This was after school. So the principals and the staff members, the athletic directors, we even had some of the builders come to show us. They were proud to show us what they had done, what they had accomplished in these facilities. So I just want to thank all of you for 
given us an opportunity because this was our second chance. It was canceled before because we couldn't all get together to come and to take the tour. But this time, even some city officials and people, um, commissioners from the city of Rialto also joined us on the tour. So it was really great. And speaking of the city of Rialto, it's that time of year, Halloween. We know that our kids get all excited for Halloween. And I would like to encourage parents to take your children to the Halloween hijinks mm -hmm. that is put on by the city of Rialto because our students from our schools participate in that. The various service clubs, key clubs, and uh, all the clubs from various middle and high schools take the opportunity to go downtown Rialto and be there to give trick-or-treats to our children so they won't have to walk through dark neighborhoods and suffer maybe some consequences of violence and so forth. So take your children to the Halloween hijinks, and it's going to be at the city of Rialto on Rialto Avenue. It's not going to be downtown this year, but if you went to the night out activities in back in August, it's going to be there by the fire station and the police department. And the fire station has a haunted firehouse. Yeah. So if you haven't participated, go by and see that. I spoke with our fire chief this morning, and he said it's really something. They, the firemen in Rialto went all out to make this a really fun activity for our children. And for the little ones, they may not want to go into the haunted fire station, but they will have rides and so forth, um, pet uh, zoo and so forth outside for them to participate in. So let's join our city. I was talking to Mr. Montes today about we service the same people, so we need to right. participate with them when activities are going on in our city because we service the same people. And I also t attended the Parent Summit. Great activity. I enjoy it every year. Looking forward to next year. B bigger and brighter things to come. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Mr. President. Well, I, I thank you for your comments, Ms. Gilbert. Next, we have uh, Clerk of the Board, uh, Joseph Martinez. Thank you, Mr. President. It's good to see your, your smiling, tired faces after a full day of work, I understand. Um, just wanted to thank the community uh, and let them know that we are moving forward in, through some of the toughest times Rialto has had. And we're going to do what we can. Um, we don't always agree, but we're going to come up with the right answers as committee here. And um, the one question I have about um, the facility that, that was toured today, um, do we have a date when students will be able to, to be there? Is it next semester, next quarter? Do we know yet? Uh, at present time, we're working on the planning. Uh, we plan to use the facility, enroll the students in next semester. Okay. That's our plan. Excellent, excellent. Um, we are a little bit behind plans that was uh, scheduled to be completed in August. They're still moving equipment in. Um, the best laid plans get uh, messed up. Um, the haunted firehouse, you're going to enjoy that. Um, it is secure. I've got a key to the firehouse as a volunteer in communications, and uh, it, it's dark. So it's, it's scary dark. If you're afraid of the dark, you're going to enjoy it. Um, also, I would like to thank Peggy Wheeler and the committee for getting um, the Engineering Academy and the Culinary Academy going. It's been a long four years since inception, and uh, unless the committee thinks it happens overnight, because we'd love it to, it really doesn't. But uh, we've got our, your best interest, the best interest of students, and they are going to really uh, do well in these two facilities. 
Um, if anyone is interested in communications or in electronics, please contact me directly. Uh, I can be reached through the district office or my website is joemartinez.org. Um, I'm a ham radio operator, volunteer through the community with the fire department, and we are constantly looking for volunteers. I know most people um, are, most of the group is my age because everyone else is working or else they're interested in their cell phone and texting. Um, but the reality of it is, I, I got to thinking, how do you present something like this that really is technology that's been around since the turn of the, a century ago? Um, well, electronics does not change much. The principles remain the same and ham radio will teach you the, the principles of electronics. And I'd be willing to, to do, donate my time as I do so much um, to adults, to children, to, to elders. And uh, you know, we, we need to make sure our community is safe and ready for, for anything. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you for your comments. Next, we have Vice President of the Board, Edgar Montes. Thank you, uh, President Ayala. Um, good evening. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. I, I, um, uh, I too was in attendance of today's tour, um, uh, joining uh, Mrs. Gilbert, uh, our board president, Mr. Ayala, and, and uh, Mrs. Nancy O'Kelly. Um, I know um, some people couldn't make it, but it's okay. There's always next time. Um, uh, I, I do. I, I would like to extend an invitation to other uh, employees um, uh, that weren't able to make it today, or, um, or or even our city staff, if that's okay. Um, maybe if uh, uh, people in the city would like to come and take a tour of the Culinary uh, Academy and, and Engineering Academy, it, it was beautiful. And um, since Miss Gilbert and, and Miss O'Kelly already spoke about it, I'm not going to talk too much about it. But um, I do want to thank uh, Mrs. Uh, Iris uh, Chu, um, our uh, Director of uh, uh, Facilities. I do want to thank Bill Ralph, uh, Director of Maintenance. Um, I do want to thank uh, our Acting Superintendent, Mr. Islam. I want to thank uh, Mrs. Peggy Willer uh, for um, giving us an awesome tour there at the uh, Dolores Huerta Sister Chavez um, Center. I want to thank Mrs. Foote from Carter High School and all her staff over there for uh, hosting us there. Um, and also, uh, I, I also uh, want to thank um, uh, the athletic director over Mr. at- Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert. 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 <laughs> over at Rialto High School uh, for um, uh, giving us a, a, a lovely tour of the uh, new uh, football field and track and field over at Rialto High School. Um, those track and fields and football fields at Carter and at Rialto, they're awesome. Mm. And um, I can't wait to see it over at Eisenhower also. Um, but but when we walked on, when, when the board, and, 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 and I also want to thank um, our Measure Y committee, oversight committee uh, members that we're able to go to because they also joined in the tour. Um, and um, when we walked on to, when we first walked on to the field, um, the track and, and, and the field, uh, turf over at Rialto High School because it was the first one we toured. Um, it, it felt like somebody, I, I think our board president said it felt like walking on Dr. Scholl's yeah. uh, footwear or something because you could just tell the difference from the concrete uh, stepping onto those floors. So um, we know that uh, our students are going to be, you know, uh, we saw them at Carter. They were using, it wasn't being used at Rialto when we got there, but at Carter they were practicing football and running up and down the track. And um, they were zooming by, so uh, that was really good to see. Um, I, I, I do want to say that um, uh, for anyone who gets a chance to uh, uh, visit the, uh, the academies, uh, the culinary arts and the engineering, it, it, you, you leave with an impression of like a university. I mean, they're awesome, uh, particularly the culinary arts. Um, they had every kind of uh, heavy-duty industrial um, uh, cooking equipment there. I, I think our board president said the only thing they needed was a wooden oven um, to complete it uh, for those uh, fire, fire uh, uh, grilled pizzas. But, um, <laughs> but um, uh, he did promise uh, to bake us some bread there, though, because uh, our board president's a good baker. Um, and uh, it... it I was just really impressed, so I, I want to really thank again um, uh, the community who, who approved the Measure Y. 
um, for these types of things for Absolutely. for you know um, so uh, I, I really want to thank them and, and I want to thank all the people involved in making it happen all the people who built it the people who were uh, overseeing the building uh, our staff members uh, I think it's awesome and and I just want to uh, uh, make it clear that um, I'm I, I agree with our board president Ayala work <laughs> completed should be work paid um, uh, and, 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 and I share that um, same belief, but at the same time, um, I agree uh, with Ms. O'Kelly that um, it, it, when, when something like this happens, when, when there's an error is made, um, I would just like to ask that we get the proof or a report, something that we can see so we can learn from it, because that, that will educate us as a board as to uh, possible, you know, what, what to watch out for, what to look for, and it's not mistrust. Uh, it's not so much mistrust, or uh, you know, or uh, us being upset with uh, anyone um, uh, regarding this issue. And um, and I don't mean, you know, I don't mean to put anyone on the spot. But if we ask a question, it's, it's in regards to what we're proving. And and. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Islam, for offering us uh, a detailed report so we could understand this thoroughly. Because it, it's hard to approve, you know, 1.4 million just off word of mouth. Um, and and again, uh, a report would help us understand it. It'll help us grow. It'll help us learn and move forward. Um, so no offense taken to anyone uh, regarding that. Um, I do want to thank um, uh, our uh, chief of safety, uh, Mr. Leary. Um, for always uh, making us feel, uh, you know, uh, safe here at our board meetings and all of uh, our safety officers and, and all of their staff um, and our safety department. Thank you very much for always being here. Uh, uh, Officer McNay, Officer uh, Rodriguez, and all the other officers that join in at our, uh, um, you know, bi-monthly uh, meetings, um, bi-weekly meetings. Um, you know, I see these guys walking people to their cars, hanging around in the parking lot till everybody's gone. So I really appreciate it, um, you know, because you never know if it's not TV cameras chasing people down, you know, um, you never know. Uh, so thank you again for, for, for that. Um, and last but not least, um, I, I want to thank um, uh, Joanne again for um, bringing up the emphasis that we need to work with our city. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the conversation came about because as we were on our tour of the Dolores Huerta um, Sister Chavez Center, um, we saw the field, the baseball field, uh, with which Mr. Martinez probably remembers. Uh, some of us can recall a year or two back, we were trying to work something out with the city regarding the baseball field that's not being utilized over there. Um, uh, you know, we've got adult school over there. We've got professional development over there. We've got these uh, uh, training academies now. Um, and that field is not being used. And right next to it is a skate park that's always filled. There's a basketball court that's always filled. And the city's using those. That's their properties. And the community's using those. Why not work something out with the city right. where we can get the, that mm -hmm. baseball field um, used by those kids in, in, in our community? So um, thank, I want to thank Ms. Gilbert again for that. And, um, and just encourage the board and Mr. Islam, um, you know, we want to move forward and, and, and re reopening discussions with the city. Please extend that to them that I don't think there's anybody on this board that wouldn't like to uh, revisit that again and see what we can work out. Mm -hmm. Correct. Sure. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Well, thank you, Vice President. Uh, you make my job easy with all the comments that were said here. I'll try to move in a little different direction so you don't have to hear everything echoed again. Uh, all the dialogue is healthy here. Okay, we're just taking care of business, nothing personal. Um, there were some uh, members in the audience that had some concerns and wanted probably to share some comments, and that's good. That's good. But we also have an agenda that we follow and the protocol. My suggestion is please take those notes, try to remember what you wanted to say. I know it's not always easy. And then our next meeting, you, you can come and speak either on the agenda or off the agenda, and we'll be glad to hear you at that time. Okay, uh, but I wanted to say that because everyone here counts, everyone, okay, because we're a community. Okay, um, 
The Common Core, obviously, just a few comments, is, is here. We're going to be challenged with it. It's like resetting education all over again, the reset button. The bar is being raised, not lowered. And there's reasons for that. The colleges overfilled with students right now. More money is not going to the colleges. So with this Common Core, it makes it more <laughs> difficult for our kids to qualify for college. Not only that, but some of the colleges are also trying to raise the entrance requirements. That's like a double challenge with Common Core and then raise the entrance requirement with the GPA. Uh, that's scary because it's our kids who need to go to college and so we need to make sure that we read the newspapers, we stick together and we, we attend some of those meetings. So, and we'll do that, but we'll do it together. In fact, there's probably a petition going on right now. The DLAC is, parents are signing a petition so we can take it to the chancellor to consider that, that move because we have common core and our kids need a chance. Um, to echo a little bit about our visitation with the culinary arts, uh, Ms. Wheeler, that's excellent what I, what I saw over there. Uh, you have uh, equipment there that parallels none. I don't know of any institutions, any schools in this area that have what we have. Right. Not only that, but the engineering department over there. Mm -hmm. You know, you have uh, computer, nu numerical com computer machines, CNCs, computer numerical control, that uh, are going to help the kids apply the math that they're learning. This is high-level learning, okay? My word of caution, though, is this. Even though we have all this equipment and we have the, the culinary arts, we have to look for some superstars to guide our kids. And just to put things in perspective, one of the Dodger, I won't mention his name, one of the Dodger pitchers in three innings makes what the President of the United States makes all year in three innings. So to get qualification, our heroes, our superheroes, they have to have a lot of experience. They're not going to work for minimum wage or, or starting salary of a teacher. We have to decide whether we want to recruit them. We get a couple superstars. We've got the foundation. Our kids, you're going to watch them on television someday coming back and saying, I got my start in Rialto. We are moving forward. I have proof right here. <laughs> Coachella Valley, every one of their students have one of these. Every one of them. Now, maybe we won't move in that direction, but there's a reason for it. Because the kids can't take their Common Core test on this. But, you know what? How many times have kids come home with homework and they've said, if only I had a tutor to help me with factoring a trinomial, but there's nobody that can help me with it, I, I could succeed. But guess what? If they have this, at least in their math classes, they can turn on the video and they can see the professor. All the mom and dad has to do is look at your video, son, look it over and over again until it starts making sense. Now, what makes this possible? What makes we look at each other, measure why past? That's what makes it possible. That's why we have a field out there. That's why we have greatness here in Rialto. But I want to caution you. We don't want the reputation where we don't pay our bills. I know, I know. We, we have business to do here. Everything we said was healthy, okay? But we need to pay our bills because if we don't and we get a bad reputation, people aren't going to want to work for us. And sometimes we need that extra guidance in areas that, uh, that we're not familiar with. And also keep in mind, when we pay our bills, we're putting food on someone else's table. Thank you so much. Uh, can we get a motion to adjourn? Uh, hold on, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to motion to move back into closed session. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.
Uh, do we? Yeah, we, we have some unfinished business still. Uh, do we have a second? I have a second. Okay, so we have a first and second to move back into closed session. Mm -hmm. uh, vote by more board members? Aye. 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 And I have another motion. Please. That we close the meeting tonight in memory of uh, Chief Security Officer Gordon Leary's brother. I don't know his name, but um, he passed away. So we want to close in memory. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. The motion carries. We'll move into closed session. And uh, it's been a good meeting. Thank you so much. So you're going in for the waiting for one more. Waiting for me, Mr. Absolutely. Let the record show is now 10:48. Uh, the board is reconvening from uh, closed session. Mohammed, uh, would you uh, you have something to report? Uh, no action was taken in closed session. No action was taken, but uh, we want everybody to know we appreciate uh, everyone who's here. Uh, you know, we get to know each other as time progresses. And there's a lot of heart in this room. There's no, no doubt about it. And uh, uh, with that in mind, uh, we will continue to do our due diligence the best we can, provide you with the services that uh, we agreed to do. We may not agree at times, but the decisions we make are in the best interests of everyone here, our students and our community, our staff. But with that in mind, too, we need to probably close for the evening. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Definitely. Well, um, <laughs> did, did you want to close? Did you want to adjourn in memory of uh, Mr. Leary? Oh yes, um, Mr. Leary's brother, Mr. Leary.
Miss uh, Gordon Leary's. Gordon. What was Gordon Leary's brother's name? You, we don't know. No. Mr. Leary. Mr. Mr. Leary. Mr. Leary. Mr. Leary. Okay. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Martinez. Gilbert. All in favor? Aye. 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 Time. Time is uh, 1049. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>